Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm gonna show you guys not only how to create a pre-game lobby with the brand new spawn pads, but also show you guys which are the key elements to make your map go from 10 place to 10 million. So let's first start with the device and how exactly we can create a pre-game lobby. Because with the new player spawn pad, we don't have a pre-game only setting anymore. While in comparison to the old spawn pads that we had, we could just say, well, enable this on pre-game only, and then we didn't have to worry about it. Now it still works perfectly, we just have to do it differently. And what's the advantage of using these ones instead of the old ones is that we can just place them freely which comes in handy to mainly focus the player on the information that we really want to show them. So how are we going to do that? Well, since we don't have a pre-game option, we have to enable it on all. Then, just under that, we'll have to set the use as island starts on yes, and the visible during game to no. And then finally, set the priority group to secondary. I'll explain to you just in a moment why secondary and not primary, but this is very important and then just freely place it where you want. Remember, the player will look exactly where you place this. So if you want them facing that tree, place it over there. If you want them facing here, then just turn on grid snap and paste it 16 times. If you don't paste one spawn pad for every possible player, they will spawn in the air. So just add 16, just to be sure. Now let's go to our actual map and then place the spawn pads that we're going to use when the player spawns in once the game has started. And here we're going to place our spawn pads again. Again, the advantage is that we can place them freely and don't have to worry about placing it on a tile and making sure that there's 16 tiles, when here we only want to use one. Now for the option, set the priority group to primary. In the pregame lobby it was secondary, here it's primary. And then the second thing that we really need to change is the use this island start to no. And then just place, just like before, 16 spawn pads. So, what exactly is different? Very easy. Don't use these spawn pads as island start, but they are primary. So what does that mean? Well, primary means I will always use these when available. So the player loads in the island. It checks. Are the primary ones available? Nope, they're not because they can't be used as an island start. So these are ignored. Let's see the secondary ones. Oh, the secondary ones are. Perfect. Then once the player will start the game, it's the exact opposite. The system will check, are these primary spawn pads enabled? Yes. Can they be used? Yes, because we're no longer on the island start. Perfect. Spawn them here. And then the secondary ones are ignored because, well, we have the primary ones. And then every time the player dies, whether it's by respawning or being very bad at a default death run, he will always spawn here no matter what you're 100% guaranteed the player will spawn in your map. So, perfect. We've got all the settings ready. Now let's jump into some different things that we really want in our pre-game lobby. Because it can be used for so much more than just being a lobby where players wait for a bit. The first thing that we want to add is information. Now remember, don't add information that you 100% rely on. Because you can't count on people reading it, but it can help people give a short introduction to what this map will be about. Or for example, if you're making a team-based game, then you can add some information on the teams. Again, inside of your game, it's better to explain this step-by-step -step as well, but it's a good first introduction as well, as a lot of people will be waiting here anyway. Now, the next part, matchmaking portals. Why a matchmaking portal? Because many maps that we create are team-based maps or multiplayer maps. And what does that mean? Well, you need other people to really be able to play or enjoy the map. Now in this case of a default death run, it doesn't apply that much. But in the case of zone wars, team-based maps, box fights, anything like that, you need opponents to be able to play. Adding a matchmaking portal will allow players that when they load up the map to queue up against others and fight it out the way that the map is intended to play. So. That's the second key important component. And now onto the last part of information or elements that we can add to our pre-game lobby. is a way to connect the player to us as a creator. That can be either asking them to support us in a nice way 
to press that um, support a creator button or it can be the way to connect us to our socials so that people can stay up to date on either how to complete the map or any new map that you create or just help your channel grow if people enjoy your map there's a big chance that they will enjoy your content as well so here you can add any link to youtube instagram whatever you really want to promote whatever social you mainly use if you get millions and millions of plays, that means millions and millions of people will also see your YouTube channel potentially, and it will help you grow as a map creator as well, because you'll have a bigger audience, you'll have more players, and it just goes hand in hand. And that's it guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial, it was very short, but I had a lot of people asking for it, so here we go, and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace!